I picked up tape deck here, cassette tape deck at my local uh, Goodwill just today. And I paid, uh, what's it, $17.50 for it. And I didn't really need a tape deck, but this one has some features that I don't have on any of my <coughs> current tape decks. And it's got a metal setting. Uh, a lot of my current ones that I have now are old and are too old to have that. Uh, metal tapes came out later. And this is a very nice dual deck auto reverse on both decks. Um, and it's got the type, uh, you know, where you can look down there and see the head. The head actually flips back and forth, you know, to play in reverse. And I thought, well, probably maybe do a little repair video, maybe replace some belts. But I just tried this out, and it works just fine. Seems to be fully functional. I haven't tried making a recording yet or dubbing from one to the other, which I never would do anyway. Don't really need to do that today. But, you know, for 17 bucks, I got a uh, cassette that I can definitely use. It's very nice. I'll have to get the model number. And I'll go ahead and take the top off of it and we'll look inside and uh, you know clean the heads and the tape path and everything but sorry no repair video on this one at least not so far but this will be a nice replacement for this old Sony deck which has got a few little problems or I may even take it uh, back to Virginia and use it there so far very nice and uh, I'll do a, do a quick demo here of how it works. Okay, got it plugged in here to the uh, front end put on my amplifier. Nice soft opening. I like that. I don't know. I think I pre recorded something on this. Let's see what it is. Hopefully, I don't get a copyright strike. I won't play it for too long. Oh, maybe I should turn it on. Okay, now reverse. Okay, that one works. Reverse. Very nice. No repair is required. Right, and here is the uh, cassette deck with the top off. I don't see any uh, swollen capacitors or anything, so looks like it's pretty good shape. Uh, I checked out the belts down there, and they seem to be pretty uh, not, you know, not loose at all and flexible and everything. So. I think the belts are okay on the drives. Um, the only thing I noticed is when I pulled the top off, I got a big whiff of uh, nicotine, you know, cigarette smoke smell. So I think this is from a smoker's house. So I will definitely go ahead and clean off the, uh, the tape path really well with alcohol. But uh, looking good so far. I took a little alcohol and a swab and cleaned up the tape heads down there. If you haven't seen this before, when you switch direction, you see how the tape head just flips over? Pretty cool. So, and both of these are working the same way. Yeah, both heads are flipping around properly. So. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, put the top back on this thing and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. You know, we're out in Arizona right now. It's where, where I picked this up and I've got a, a Sony tape drive down there that works fine. I might take this back to my uh, basement uh, listening room in Virginia 
you know, I've got my old 70s vintage uh, Akai cassette down there that I've been using, but this one does have, you know, the Dol different Dolby's and metal setting and everything else. So I might go ahead and use this. And uh, then just use my Akai as a display piece because it's getting, getting pretty old. It still works. So there's getting to be a renewed interest in uh, pretty much all physical media. Originally it was just uh, turntables, and but now these these things are getting pretty hard to find in thrift stores. So I'm starting to pick up some cassettes because they're starting to get uh, some renewed interest in cassette decks. And I've got a ton of uh, cassettes, uh, either the ones that I recorded back in the day or pre-recorded, and uh, I want to be able to listen to those and. You can pick these up. Here I got a nice copy of Final Richie's Can't Slow Down. 50 cents. Tina Turner, Private Dancer, 50 cents. Where uh, albums, the album equivalent, which I already have the album equivalent of that, but you know, even a used one's going to cost you two or three dollars. So cassettes are a bargain. So uh, yeah, I think that's what I'll do with this. I'll uh, pack this up and take it back to Virginia when we go back in the spring and set it up in the basement listening room. So thanks for watching this non-repair and very short uh, video and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, it looks like this might be a repair video after all. Um, while playing a couple of tapes, I noticed after this ran for a while, I was getting a lot of warbling, uh, a lot of flutter. So I'm thinking the, uh, well, maybe the flywheels need to be lubricated or those belts need to be replaced or both. I'll demonstrate here just real quick. See if you can hear it. Yeah, I'm sure you can probably hear it. I didn't want to play that too long. To, I don't want to get a copyright strike. Because that's Lionel Richie. He might... Uh, might happen but yeah definitely getting a, uh, some serious uh, variations in the tone so uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and order belts for the drives and replace those and uh, I want to have it apart see if I can maybe lubricate the uh, some of the um, drive mechanisms and we'll check it out again Trying to get the uh, drives dismounted so I can replace the belts. And I got this front part loose here by undoing a couple screws on the sides and on the bottom. There's a whole bunch of uh, cables going up here. But it looks like they all have different connectors. So I think I can just pull them all off and figure out where they go when it's time to reassemble. I'll give that a try. Well, that took a little bit of finagling. But there's basically four screws on the back of these drives. And then they will, with, once you get all the wires, um, not really disconnected, they're just kind of wrapped around the back of this thing. So able to get the drive out. Now, in order to replace the belt, this main belt, I do need to pull off the uh, little motor carrier here. Uh, there's a screw here. And uh, looks like a couple screws, two or three or so on this side. And I think this whole thing will come off, which allows you to be able to squeeze the belt. See these little plastic things hold the uh, flywheels on. So I need to get the belt off of that and the new one on. So I will try pulling that off uh, to get access to the belt. I'll have to do the same thing to that drive over there. Okay, here's a little uh, quick uh, dirty trick. If you pull this one small screw out of this side, you can pry that out just enough to be able to get the belt off the back. So that's what I did. So once I get the new ones, I'll put that right back on. I received the uh, belt order. Check, see if they fit. All right, I got this drive remounted. That was a little fiddly, but got it in there. And I found I could undo that little screw on the side of this uh, 
metal keeper here and fish the uh, new belt right down around uh, that flywheel and then get it strung over using one of these uh, pool tools here. So that's got a new belt there, a new belt there. So I just got to put that screw back in and we'll be ready to reassemble this thing and see if it sounds any better. All right, that all's back in. Uh, I'm sorry I wouldn't be able to film the uh, replacement of these belts because uh, you know there's weird angles and it's, you need both hands and it's pretty fiddly to get those things on properly. So um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You got one belt that goes around both flywheels on both sides and one belt for the tape counter. And uh, you gotta keep all the wires straight. So now we've got all these little special little switch extenders that I gotta put back in and get them aligned properly when I put the front back on the chassis. So that'll be able to film that either, but you get the idea. Get all these back on there and uh, shove the thing together. Let's see how it turns out. All right, with those new belts on, both drives seem to be playing well, but they're playing slow. Maybe that's because of the thickness of the belts or something. But anyway, right down here, underneath those cables, are some little pots. And that's where you adjust the speed. And I've been adjusting the speed and trying to get the music to sound good. And I've done that. Um, but my calibration tape is out in Virginia, and I'm out here in Arizona, so I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, maybe listen to this for a while and see if I can get it a little closer, but then just button it up and take it back to Virginia, play the calibration tape, and uh, um, get it dialed in. So I think what I'm going to do is end the video here. And uh, once again, this is a very nice Pioneer double deck and seems to be working now with some brand new belts high quality drives and just need to get the speed dialed in so and again this was a $15 purchase but you know the belts cost me what 25 20 bucks you know was shipping another 10 bucks so it wasn't a cheap uh, machine but <clears throat> fun little project so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.